welcome you back to this our show, Think Tech Hawaii Zoom in Humane Architecture. This is happening to the 279th show. And thanks to our producer, Michael, we show you which accumulated viewer you are. Thank you for it. And this is the Boston Bench Booster Show, Volume 16, with our guest, Matt Noblet, talking about what we can learn from his tempered for our at times troubled tropics. Hey Matt, how's it going? <laughs> hey Martin. So today it's just the two of us. We're miss missing our third leg. Um, <laughs> I'm always getting in Senator Chen Li Stang's newsletter here right before the show and one article is about the three legs of social housing, it's about social housing. Mm -hmm. So with this leg here, they have to take a little, we try our very best. <laughs> so we're trying to give the Soto clues and everyone else back in Hawaii from our records. We're kind of synced as we, you know, exchanged before the show, we're both uh, in the, uh, in the kind of, uh, just around the freezing, so we have to both uh, having, you know, sweaters on. <laughs> sweaters, we wouldn't make it, you know, um, outside without getting inside, warming each other up every now and then, right? Yeah, I have, in this case, I have my uh, deep cold sweater on, like all the way up to the top. There you go, bundle up. So the, the first slide, I thought it would be great to just talk about what the, the subtitle of the show is, um, is people in planet-friendly democratic so democratic architecture, which is the philosophy of the firm ever since the beginning and continued to be. But I thought we uh, should talk a little bit about what's going on here. We're not, I feel kind of bad just closing the eyes um, uh, and not talking about the circumstances of the built environment. And this is another borrowing from the to be continued show comparing architecture and um, automobile. Very special automobile is something that moves, which is a tank. <laughs> the number two. So the hottest news from us Germans is that we finally, after many months of thinking about it, are sending what like fourteen of these monsters to the Ukraine uh, support them, which is great. Yeah, and this mm -hmm. article that my dad uh, sent uh, me many months ago, just when that discussion started. And his stepdad, um, so my step-grandfather was developing that beast for the Bundeswehr together with the uh, United States Army. And, um, so I'm, I'm used to that thing, you know, through my childhood, and I, I never would have thought in my wildest you know, darkest dream that be reanimated <laughs> uh, you know, in such a way. And how do we cut the curve back to, I guess, people in plant brain if we just contemplate on that for another second, because it's it's tragic in so many ways. Obviously, you know, every life is pressure. So every life lost, like the worst drama. And, uh, but besides that, um, you know, you you guys and 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 we have been featured side by side in the Faden Twenty First Century Atlas of Architecture with your North LB and town. <laughs> and so we just wish, you know, we, we will cheer and cheerlead everyone to continue with that and to to do that. But that's that's like the you know the the planet friendliness and people friendliness within these buildings that we will talk about. And this tank is obviously, you know, um, trying to, you know, keep uh, people friendly by teaching the ones who are not behaving that way. There's a planet friendliness or unfriendliness of that one, too, because um, guess what the gas mileage of a leopard, two is approximate. <laughs> I would guess it's something like two kilometers a, a liter or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I looked up, so it's like 500 liters for 100 kilometers. And uh, his <laughs> brother, the American brother, the Abrams is even worse. It's like 700. And then it has a kerosene turbine. So just 
at the same time, we're just digging ourselves deeper into our, you know, other big problem, which is uh, the environment, right? So it could be it of, could be a new market for Elon Musk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That being said, let's get the next slide up. That, I hope higher up because we're um, heading on the next slide. We're seeing um, it shows up. We will see uh, a promising product <clears throat> back then. That was in the 30s. And you remember that one, right? Mm, the Dimaxion. Yeah. So the gas mileage of that one was like 8 liters per 100 kilometers, so like 30 miles per gallon. Mm. Moved 8 people. That was really ahead of time. And um, we promised the audience, we've been talking about the building at the on the right, um, which we know from our school days. Uh, that was the fairly recent thing. It was like a decade old or so. so this is Foster's, um, um, Willie's uh, Faba Dumas building. Mm -hmm. I've, since I've been thinking about it, one <clears throat> this, uh, little discourse discussion with you. Um, is it fair to say that it was still pretty formally driven versus Perform, I mean, versus energy performance? I have to believe that's the case, um, you know, just based on the fact, even uh, where, even the, though this was built in a rather northern uh, climate, um, this idea of just sort of skinning the outside of the building with pure glass and not having any sun shading on the interior really can only be enabled by uh, huge amounts of air conditioning and therefore fossil fuels. And particularly at the time that this was built, that was pretty much all there was. Um, yeah. So I, I I can't remember all the details about it, but um, it's one of those, I think, seminal buildings that <clears throat> on its own was was um, something. I mean, it was it was it had its value and it had its its moment. It also is the kind of building that proliferated in much the way that the Seagrams, you know, any of the, the Mies van der Rohe, powers uh, sort of sort of proliferated across the corporate uh, American landscape. This is sort of the precursor to the outer beltway campus office park uh, working building. Yeah. And zeitgeist wise <clears throat> timeline, well, it was uh, we also promised to feature the first polo, which was also <laughs> the Audi 50. And that was in 75, the same year. Then. And other than that, they probably don't have much in common because that Audi was, or the Polo was actually the even the more primitive version of that Audi, really for the little people. This is like the mm -hmm. little brother of the of the rabbit, the Golf. And the the Willys building was always, you know, uh, to begin with a more upscale sort of thing. And mm -hmm. um, I guess Bucky Fuller, uh, the the show code at the bottom right, which is also actually not a show code, but a preview of that um, uh, immobilia, immobilia show to be continued, that um, uh, Bucky was present in Hawaii through his uh, Kaiser Dome in Waikiki. That's not anymore. And um, so, um, and and Foster did this, the, the thing he's standing in front there at the top, um, uh, middle is actually a replica or like an homage uh, mm -hmm. that he did because he got to know Bucky and was really considering him a mentor and an influence. So he was building that in I think in 2010 or something like that. And by by that time, I think he he cut the curve. And I always when I talk to the emerging generation, and you please let me know if this is appropriate. I compare, uh, you know, um, uh, Foster in his own personal union, and I guess his partners and his team, but to, um, you know, the transition from Günther Bainisch to Stefan Bainisch and you guys, while um, Günther had, as we keep talking about, a very social approach to architecture, and you guys added the solar approach to it. Mm -hmm. And Foster did this too with a building that, next slide, um, you guys encouraged me to, uh, check out with the emerging generation, which this year shows that we did. This is the Deuce Board <laughs> built in in '93, so it's actually two decades later. <clears throat> to, you know, uh, being very ambitious about, and uh, we had a really great time. the The, the building manager uh, only um, has the building since one and a half years, and he's an engineer, and hmm. really. Is really happy to have him because he recognizes what he has, 
and he's not um, shy about talking about all the challenges that uh, the previous um, managements had pretty much um, disrespected and screwed things up pretty pretty badly. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most <laughs> obvious examples is uh, in the center on the right, where you see uh, you know taking pictures of the the jealousies that go down. Um, and they were all that. Do you remember them? I actually remember them from back then. And he says they're actually not manufactured anymore. These are these micro perforated ones hmm. mm -hmm. um, are brilliant because even though the shades are all down, as you can you see, see there up one, you can still see through and light comes through. So then yeah. uh, below there where I placed the Jaguar E, -E which we started to compare the, again, the, the, <laughs> the car going with it is, you know, it is a collectible car, and but it takes a lot of maintenance to keep it in its original. And what it's sitting in front of is where they had replaced uh, blinds with opaque ones, and it's like totally screws mm. the <clears throat> of a sudden I, track in the dark. And that's funny because they do still manufacture. There's two. There's still two companies who manufacture perforated blinds i'm surprised that they did that you should get me their their names and i should actually get it to him that would probably help him to to swap these out to switch mm. these out <clears throat> and so um yeah um he at the building as with you know with many you know who want to be critical about foster even with a hong kong shanghai bank and <clears throat> the commerce bank, say oh they don't work you know the way they were intended mm. i think it's to say you know he tried and uh, only if you try you can fail and you always try to improve and learn and often the ones who say that haven't even tried right and so yeah i think i mean i think it also brings up an interest a, a critical point relative to like the impact of building ownership and care i mean we can do as designers the best we can and sometimes we expect too much and that's clearly not great, but, um, uh, you know, as building technology evolves and improves, um, in terms of its performance, um, it's as, as much incumbent on the people who live in and operate the building to understand the way that it was intended to be operated and try to do that faithfully as it is on the designers to, to pay attention to new developments and technology that can improve building performance I'm glad you um, mentioned that because that reminds me of my <laughs> memory of when i had my first teaching gig in bremen and a colleague of mine had um you know an inner scoop to the north lb through dr boudin who was the, the boss there the big boss so he gave mm -hmm. us a tour gave the students a tour and i was um, joining them and so um since you set me up with thomas Auer tomorrow who's a transolar partner and uh, professor at the tomb so thanks to you we get together tomorrow and i will if you know opportunity on itself will share this story with him that <laughs> um uh, through that connection we we're able to get access to that one little secret room mm -hmm. where from transolar we're, we're still <laughs> there on a daily basis and basically push push some buttons and we were taking a chance and saying hey okay, now the secret what doesn't work and they basically you know very honest and bluntly said the factor human doesn't mm -hmm. work at times <laughs> and the best example was that the night pooling has to be activated which is an essential part of of any even passive house mm -hmm. where you let the cooler night air, especially in our temperate climates, flush the building naturally overnight and then gets you over the day. And there is this flap that you explained to us also in, in other you know, projects in Jensen that we looked at last. And uh, they just said people just leave the office, rush home, which is understandable. But if they want to have a comfortable next morning, they got to understand that they opened that, that mm -hmm. flap. Mm -hmm. And that's what they said they to continuously tell the people. But I have to I have to say after especially comparing to to Foster this Foster building unless for maintenance uh, where you can actually open but only with tools uh, the mm. inner frame um, it's it's hermetic it's not mm -hmm. engaged 
really something that you guys are different to. I mean, Foster is uh, categorized and put into the drawer as the high tech architect together with Rogers and Grimshaw. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So um, you have a different take. And we did the same with the kindergarten that joins you in the Faden is that uh, we said, no, we, uh, even though Passive House says no operable windows, we ignore that. We do. Mm -hmm. At the time where the temperature is the same outside and inside, people need that and they deserve it. So. Yeah, I totally agree. What I like about that story too is the mental image of like two transolar employees having been like accidentally built into a room at the building that they just never figured their way out of <laughs> during construction. I will quote you on that one tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> and at top right, just quick, I also took a chance to show them our subway canopies there uh, very early in the morning. And so they got, a, they got a taste of that one as well, because public transportation is also something that we need to mm -hmm. uh, better and a little bit more poetically pragmatic pragmatically poetic which is what this project tries to dwell upon quite a bit and the next uh slide is <laughs> on with uh my lenny because as we said you know stefan has one too and he's also in medical realm and so both our youngest sons are the medical lenny so my medical <laughs> lenny significant other rima we were going in their polo which we introduced to go and buy uh, the ingredients for a delicious delicious sushi that they were making and we had to go to dusseldorf to do that and we drove by this uh, which used to be a smart dealership which i remember because we have been the local contact architect for these uh, in the city of garbson and uh, the architect, at least of sort of concept, and then it was sort of smothered a little after that, are another spin-off, Banish Architect, and proves that sort of, you know, principle not to hold on to the people and enslave them and only have the owner of the firm, <laughs> or as architect. But your guys' philosophy is the more you can send out and, and, and teach, you know, and get the message out even further, the better. Mm -hmm. And in that was Kaufmann and Tyler <clears throat> still around? In yeah, not too many. Not too. I don't think people realize how, I, within the German architectural landscape how many firms were were born of an experience with either Danish and partner or Danish architect and uh, that exist as very successful practices today. Yeah, and that's great. And it reminds me of your friend, our friend Bundet, who does the same. That's his philosophy in coaching the younger generation, and he equips them with little opportunities and jobs so they can you know start their own firm which is really quite um, reputable another thing on the the right column is um that um lenny's hand rests on a display of solid timber columns so they're proposing which is um a trend as we know a good trend to make the structure of this whole building which is rather amazing and ambitious because it's a high rise that's solid timber, and that's, again, following the footsteps of many. Below that is your concert hall out of solid timber. And in the same city where we had consulted the local smart thing in Garps, and I just read in the news that our solid timber school gets um, expanded, which I'm... Mm -hmm. um, as far as the fenestration, which we will then cut the curve to your Harvard project back, is um, there was a... Um, a promotional, you know, book out there in the center, in the middle. And this double page was dedicated to, as it says, high tech facades, the same in English as in German. And <laughs> when you read through the fancy, you know, description <clears throat> of the of the diagrams there, it's pretty much the same old as, uh, you know, the double facade and the double facade Really here in the temper, it seems to get a renaissance that's we're always stumbling over it to <clears throat> really be something. I was just debating that with the emerging generation in studio. And again, as we sort of concluded already last week, maybe in Hawaii, it's sort of too much, like having that puffy coat on and that hat with a windmill and, and film TV. Um, because again, and the glass has to make it there and uh, glass used to be sand and you need thousands of degrees of, so the, the overall uh, circular economy <clears throat> thing is, is, ends up being sort of quite questionable. But here in the tempered, you know, especially under the 
trouble of you know us having relied on Putin too much and not having followed your Nord LB in our kindergarten too much. Um, mm -hmm. Seem to be more than ever on vogue and in fashion. But again, in detail, they are pretty much the same old. I look through these diagrams. Of course, they have to have triple pane glaze as the main thermal one. <clears throat> but right. nothing really has changed. And we want to look at things that are different, <clears throat> and especially make maybe sense also in Hawaii. And that gets us back to your Harvard engineering project with the next slide uh, that we have already seen and talked about with um, the Soto quite a bit last week. But we what we haven't talked about, which we want to do now, is what we see sort of on the outside behind the glass. And for that reason, I think let's go to the next slide and you explain us the thought process of what the option would have been. Yeah, I mean, um, I guess maybe just starting from your your previous comments about the double facade, we I think I think I've always had been a bit we've we've done a little bit of looking into that and i've always been a bit skeptical about whether the kind of the classical uh ventilated or sealed double facade was more of an architectural dream than an actual performance benefit and um and in an arcs and and of course architects love it because it, it brings depth to the elevation and to the to the building facade which is the thing especially in a cost in a, in a cost difficult environment you really struggle with everything that you can afford when you have limited amount of money to spend looks very flat. Um, but what does make a big difference to the building performance is a some is the layer outside that stops the sun from hitting the glass because buildings like greenhouses that are mostly glass uh, will heat up and the UV rays will be trapped behind the glass and you overheat. You know you can t if the sun beating on the glass continually over the day will just overheat the environment behind it which again you can only compensate with uh cheap energy in the form of, of air conditioning which is really uh one of the biggest drivers of buildings carbon footprints um in in the world today so um what we were looking at here was a way what you're seeing here are some sketches that were made to um think about of course the depth and the architectural qualities of the facade um but with i think the, the the kind of assumption that there was going to be some kind of layer here that was going to control the sun relative to the building interior and um what we were also concerned with is that what you're seeing here is the the front the print the, the main elevation of the building the main facade and it's about 500 feet long and so we wanted to look for a way to to um break the scale of the building down for one thing which we did obviously with these three articulated boxes uh, but even those boxes are quite large and what we thought was is if there was some kind of almost like a veil uh, or a scrim that could be uh, hung in front of these these boxes that would kind of disguise the scale of them uh, that would be a, a beneficial thing so we really started uh, kind of exploring not artic you know not articulating the facade with punched windows and visible floor lines which would tell you intuitively what how big these things are uh, but really to make it more uh, a bit more mysterious as to exactly what you're kind of looking at. Yeah, so that's understandable. <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I like your your sort of professional criticism of the fetishism with certain things, even though they're kind of <laughs> you know driven by the right motivation principally, but maybe as we said, maybe it's a little too much, and then you know what. How do you get that keep that genie sort of in the bottle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, as one was reading, so we don't need to get back. But the project uh, the, in Düsseldorf that's proposed is by Tadao Ando, who's one of the masters of uh, minimalism, as it was called when we went to school. Mm -hmm. He's up in the early '80s, and Foster, by the way, is in his late '80s. So two of these, uh, you know, um, really. Uh, you know, um, legendary people oh, yeah. who really pushed the profession in the profound direction. And we're thankful, um, but again, it's 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 challenging as to keep things moving and not to become trapped in sort of you know in sort of trends that you then sort of uncritically take over. And mm -hmm. so, well appreciated your uh, again um, attempt here to um, 
rethink. And so then let's take a look at the, in the last, I guess, two, three minutes we have, let's go back inside of the building. And um, uh, there's two more of the great sort of interior um, breakout spaces and uh, livable always as always even with our small you know kindergarten projects where every you know room and very square feet is prescribed mm -hmm. the only room we have is making the the, the floor uh, the hallway a little wider and making the street <laughs> the same on a very sort of a profane typological scale but again on the on the left side before we then really dig really deep and you explain us the development of system a prototypical development here we get a first taste and glimpse of how it performs and not just i mean the energy performance we will see later on and more elaborately but here you really see how it visually aesthetically uh you know phenomenologically performs right mm -hmm. yeah exactly i mean this if you you can kind of at some level see all three of these images as related the the one on the left is the is a, is a is a typical office in the building and you see the sunscreen on the outside of the glass there um and not only does it shade the sun from the interior of the or say shade the interior of the building from the sun uh, but the top surfaces also sort of reflect the daylight deep into the into the depths of the not only just this office but then through the glass partitions that line the corridors uh into those public spaces so like you said it's it's just as important to create I mean, it's it's important to obviously create that space, that quarter of space, and these kind of eddies of space that allow people to have little tables and chairs where they can gather. Uh, but it's equally as important to pay attention to the qualities that those spaces have. Uh, in this case, you were talking about obviously daylight and the ability to see through these offices to the outside. It makes those interior zones uh, livable, and um, in addition to 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 sort of making the kind of visual communication with the offices uh very very clear absolutely and then we can as we did the last couple of times we can throw in an appetizer here uh with a next <laughs> slide without having time to talk about it just to make you uh, mouth water make you hungry for coming back next week when uh you will show us more in detail the development of these systems here and here already you can get a taste of it so uh, right now where it's you know cold outside you basically harness um, and harvest the the solar uh, capacity of the sun and um, and support to stay warm inside while in the endless summers that we have in honolulu um, <laughs> it would always keep you cool <laughs> so uh, looking forward to that more in detail next week and until then please yeah everyone else and with us in the tempered stay very social and solar and um, in the tropics hopefully again the soto you'll be back with us next week stay equally social and shade it bye bye Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.